Microsoft just revealed every single Xbox Series X specs, and we've got videos, imagery, and a whole lot more. What's up everybody, Brad here, back again. Microsoft this morning, very early on a Monday, revealed all the Xbox Series X details, and I've got some videos and imagery, and we're gonna start with that because that is what you care about. So here are the official spec lists from Microsoft. The CPU is an eight core at 3.8 gigahertz, uh, or 3.66 gigahertz with SMT, uh, custom to Zen CPU. The GPU is 12 teraflops, 52 compute units at 1.825 gigahertz on a custom RDNA2 GPU. The die size is 360.45 millimeters squared. Uh, the processor is seven nanometers enhanced or enhanced meaning probably it's like a second generation ish seven nanometers. Uh, the memory or the RAM is 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 with 300 mega 320 megabit bus speed. The memory bandwidth is 10 gigabytes at or 10 gigabytes at 500. 560 gigabytes per second or six gigabytes at 336 gigabytes per second. Uh, internal storage is a one terabyte custom NVMe solid state drive. The IO throughput is 2.4 gigabytes or gigabytes, yes, per second raw or 4.8 gigabytes uh, per second compressed. There is expandable storage. If you've been watching this channel, I scooped that Microsoft was working on that. So there is expandable storage. It is a one terabyte expandable card. It matches the internal storage exactly. Uh, external storage options include USB 3.2 for expandable uh, additional storage if you don't want to go for those cards. Um, there's also a 4K UHD Blu-ray drive, and the performance target is 4K at 60 frames per second with up to 120 frames per second. Microsoft is saying that they built all of this on top of what they are calling their Xbox Velocity Architecture. And so what this is is basically the design of the internals and all that stuff. What you're seeing here, there's a nice exploded view showing the internals and all of the other features. There's three airflow channels, but one of the key things that Microsoft is shouting here, or touting, I should say, is their split... Uh, motherboard design. Now, this isn't entirely new. There are other devices out on the market that have split motherboards, but this is definitely a first time in a console. It's more, you typically see it more in like server sometimes or, or distributed um, computing networks and stuff like that, or where you need super small form factors. But there you go. That is the full spec, spec breakdown. That eight cores at 3.8 gigahertz is going to be monstrous in the 12 teraflops gpu is going to be incredible now microsoft isn't just dropping specs they aren't dropping just specs today they are dropping some videos here which you can sh that shows off game loading time and instant replay so here you go you can give a a quick watch here of the loading times demo now keep in mind this is a series x versus the one x and the one x is the highest uh end console you can buy today so just keep in mind just look how much faster this is now this is going to be crazy once you get used to it i shouldn't say crazy once you get used to it but it's going to be crazy when you first see it because it's just going to become natural you're right now we're used to playing okay we hit load and then things just wait and we're like well, yeah, whatever you scroll twitter or whatever you subscribe to my channel on youtube um and then you get into playing but you can see how much faster the series x is than the one x it is it is a, a monumental leap in gaming performance that we are going to see. Now, granted, this isn't going to be exclusive to the Xbox Series X. Anybody, not anybody, you can't just go out and do this easily. But Sony has already said, hey, we are going to be doing this. If you have a very, very high-end PC, you already know about shorter loading times. But for console gamers, this is going to be a big deal and something you should be excited about because it's going to make, it's going to get you into your games faster, but even faster than the loading times is this quick resume feature, which I'm very excited about as well, because what it allows you to do is just instantly load up a, a previous save state and get you back in your gaming even faster. I mean, look, watch, just watch how fantastic this is. This is the little things that are going to make a big difference in the next generation gaming experience. So you see, you picked 47 there and it shows you the loading screen and you're like, okay, so now I'm gonna, oh, wait, no, I'm already starting exactly where I left off previously. Now, this is only gonna work in single player games. So keep that in mind because you can't, you can't save a state like in, a, in the middle of a battle, but for single player games, just popping around between the games that you've previously played. Look at that, right back into Ori, right back where you need to be. Everything is just right there. It's just very quick. And that is gonna be a pretty big differentiator um, from when it comes to what you're used to on say the Xbox One X. We don't know what PlayStation is gonna do if they have something similar, but I would imagine that they're at least trying to do this. But the cool thing here that Microsoft is not showing off yet is that I believe that these states will work across X 
xCloud. So if you pull up your device, uh, your game up on your phone, as long as it's saved to the cloud, you can then jump in and out. So look for that feature to come eventually. I don't know exactly when it's gonna launch. I don't have all those details, but I know that Microsoft is working on making this save state transferable across any device. So just imagine how cool that would be that you're playing Ori on your P on your console and you're like, ah, I gotta go to the dentist and you're sitting in the dentist office. Um, and then you just pull it right back up and you right where you are. There's no tinkering around with menus. It just kind of works. And they always say that technology is best when it gets out of the way. And this is truly consoles getting out of the way of some great gaming experiences here. So Microsoft, again, just walking through that eight cores at 3.8 gigahertz, 12 teraflops. Um, that, that is a massive die at 360.45 millimeters squared. I mean, just a massive um, die. And then 16 gigs of GDR6. Microsoft is not talking about Lockhart yet, by the way. I still believe that is on the agenda. Maybe we'll have some more later this week or next week about that. Um, but it's really good that we finally got that confirmation of one terabyte expansion card. Um, I believe those are going to be the same solid state that are on the internal, so they're probably going to be very expensive, but it's also good um, that you'll be able to do uh, external storage. So to differentiate there, they say expandable storage is for the, the, the drives or the slots that, are, that I just talked about. Ex external storage means you can plug in like a spinning platter drive. Now keep in mind that if you do plug in one of the spinning platter drives, you're not going to get the same type of performance that you are going to get with uh, that solid state drive. And I think that is probably the reason they're doing that is they're giving you a budget option, right? If you, if you want to go just buy a whole bunch of platters and make a huge external storage box, you can go ahead and do that at the sacrifice of performance. If you demand the best of the best, you can go out and buy another one terabyte expansion card for whatever dollars it's going to be and get the best of the best, but you will have to pay that premium. Um, so keep that all in mind. And then it's nice to see official confirmation that we are getting a 4K UHD Blu-ray drive. I think everybody kind of implied that it'd be nuts to ship an old standard DVD drive in there at this point, especially everybody moving to Blu-rays at all, if they're even buying physical media anymore. But I mean, look at that exploded view there. It's pretty. It's it's stacked. It's got a vapor chamber in there, which if you're not familiar with vapor chamber, it basically means an isolated loop of for water cooling. So Microsoft has done a lot here, and it's definitely clear that they are, in fact, going with the tower PC chassis design. Microsoft is promising that it's going to be super quiet. I'm very curious if this is going to fit into my console at home, not the gaming console, but my entertainment console. So this would be cool. Um, Microsoft is dropping a lot of details. Now we might be getting some more information potentially on Wednesday of this week. Microsoft has their GDC event, although I suspect they might be talking more about specs. And that's probably why they came out with this information today is that they've got this keynote plan for Wednesday to talk about uh, Xbox Series X and xCloud. And in that session, they might do a little bit deeper dive than we are getting through the blog posts and through some of the videos. But we will keep you locked here. As I've always done, I'll keep you guys updated on everything that we're hearing. Keep that uh, channel subscribed. I'm blabbering here. Catch you guys next time.